So this is another in a series that talks about how IoT devices um, present their identity and how that identity is registered in different uh, event streaming hubs. And in some cases, those identities are stored in secure enclaves in the IoT devices. Other times, it's just burned in as part of the firmware on a low volume run. Um, and in this case, I don't really care if it's an enclave or not. We're just going to talk basically about um, how signature signed uh, keys can be generated, and those keys will be put in as part of every request for the to uh, provide the identity to the hub. So in this case, we're going to talk about Azure IoT Hub, and we're going to generate um, signed access uh, tokens, shared access signature tokens, and how we're going to do that in the hub. In this case, we're going to do it through the GUI. I'll probably do another talk later about doing this through a command line interface or through a template. In this case, um, the simplest thing to do is we're going to basically go through this process and we're going to create an IoT hub. And if we have a lot of devices, you know, the hub might already exist, but basically we create an IoT hub. And then inside that hub, we create the devices that we need. In this case, I'm going to create one device because I have one device. And I'm actually going to play with using my uh, M5, M5 stack. And that's actually a AWS device, but we're going to use it anyway in this case and not use the secure uh, certificate store. We're going to do just put it right in. I wanted to try a little Python. So <clears throat> we create the IoT hub and we create all the devices. I'm actually going to do all this in the portal in the walkthrough. Um, again, you could do this through the CLI. And then after we've created all the devices, what we're going to do is we are going to connect to the IoT hub. We're going to use the shared access uh, token, basically. Um, so the hub itself has its own um, API. And if you provide identity to that, you can then generate, you can then query it for all kinds of information. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the IoT hub um, with a token that actually represents um, like an admin role. And that admin role will give us access to all the secrets for all the devices. And then we're going to take those secrets and we're going to generate um, a shared token for each device. In this case, I have one device. So we're just going to use the IoT Explorer for this. I don't know why, but the Azure portal does not actually have this functionality. And so they built this unsupported tool, which is kind of cool, but it's sort of like a mini portal that happens to have this feature. A little weird, but okay. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create an IoT hub here. We don't have an IoT hub, so we're going to create it. Uh, when we create the IoT hub, we got to give it a name, put it in a resource group. And you've got to be a unique name in your uh, subscription. In this case, because my IoT devices are actually going to be out on the internet or basically in my house, those are going to be public access. We could do private access. And if we do that, we're going to end up with, uh, you know, we'll figure out a way to do um, private networks for that. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pick the tier for the demo. What I did was, and um, I'll probably do this in other talks, I just used the free tier because I don't really need any of the other features when I've only got one device. And I'm pretty low volume on this. Um, and then in this case, I decided to use shared access policies, and that lets us do the uh, token kind of thing. And you can find this in some of the other walkthroughs. And then we create this thing, and you'll see a submitting deployment in the upper corner. And basically, that just will run for a while while it provisions it. Okay, so then when it provisions the device, uh, we end up with a hub, and it's got nothing in it because we just provisioned it. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to click on devices. There are no devices, so I'm going to add my M5 stack um, device to this thing, right? And so we click on add devices and we give it a device name. I call it device one because I'm super creative. And then in this case, I'm going to do symmetric keys. We could do X509 self-signed or CA signed. If you were doing a production run, you would do uh, X509 CA signed if you had high enough volume. If you were cheap or whatever, you'd use the self-signed because uh, they are cheaper. In this case, I'm going to use symmetric key, which the uh, portal is actually going to generate for me, so that's no big deal. So we create that. Uh, when you get done hitting the create, you'll see a list of all the devices that were created. And you can see here that we're going to use the shared access. Um, we're going to use the token here. And so when we click on it, we can see the device ID and then a primary key and a secondary key and a primary connection string and a secondary connection string. Um, and there's no parent devices here. These aren't like bundled in some way. And so that's cool, right? So now I've got a hub and I've created a device. And what I'd like to do 
is with my API tool, I'd like to connect to the hub and then for this particular device, I'd like to query it and then have it and then generate like a connection token for the device itself. So we're going to use these connection strings on the hub to connect to and use the APIs on the hub to create a token for that device. So we go to the shared access policies for this hub. And what we're looking for is we need a URL that's signed for this uh, device so that we can have IoT hub owner permission. And probably I could get away with one of the other permissions, but the simplest one always is IoT own, you know, hub owner. So I'm like over, what do they say, minimum permission? I didn't really do that here, although this may be the minimum. So what you'll see here is the connection strings. Um, and so if I present this connection string from a CLI tool or from an SDK or from the IoT Explorer, uh, then I become the IoT hub owner if I use this string. So you really got to protect these strings because anybody with this string now owns your hub, right? That's bad if it gets out. Uh, and you got two, so you could drop one of these and then use your secondary. Like So a lot of times people have a primary and secondary configured in their management console. Anyway, so we're going to take this IoT hub owner role token, and we're going to feed it to the Azure IoT Explorer, which is a preview tool. We just paste the connection spring, string in, and you can look at this. I'm going to delete it anyway, so yeah, this ain't going to work for you. Uh, and, oh, I should do that after this talk. And um, so you can see that the token actually contains the host name, the shared access policy permission, and then it has a policy key, which is basically something that was signed uh, to give us this permission when we connect. When we connect, we actually can see all the devices just like we could in the console. We click on the first device and you can see here uh, that we're looking right into the config of this device on the hub and the primary key and secondary key, primary connection string, secondary connection string are just like on the other user interface. But now we wanna create a SAS token. And so we're gonna click down arrow on that and we just say we're going to use the primary key in this case. And the question is, how long is a connection good for? We're going to say, or how long, you know, will this token be good for? You can make it really long. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, and then in this case, uh, if we click on the I here, we hit the generate button. It'll generate a token connection string. And that's it. And then we take that token connection string. And anybody that connects with that token connection string can actually be represents that device. So you got to protect the primary key and the connection URLs. And that's it. You burn that into the device and the device can now connect to it and you're good. I hope that was useful and gave you some idea on how to generate SaaS tokens for Azure Hub IoT devices. Have a great day.